We've all been touched in some way by disease. It's rare to find anybody who hasn't had a close relative who's been hit by one of the most deadly diseases of our time, in particular, cancer. Over the course of the revolution in molecular genetics and molecular biology that's happened in our lifetimes, we've realized that there are ways that genes get turned on and turned off within our cells, and these get messed up in cancer. Cancer research is experiencing uh, an exciting phase. Uh, we all have heard uh, about the possibility of targeting the specific defect that drives the cancer process with specific drugs. But the inconvenient truth is that uh, although this led to this uh, notion of precision medicine, so we are very precise, we are doing so using a very limited amount of information. And this information is made of non-coding RNAs. I said to myself, we have to change because we are completely blind. It's exciting, it's also quite daunting. And it's one of the reasons why we've started the Institute for RNA Medicine. To so take this information, this brave new world of non-coding RNAs and translate it or move it into the clinic and really show a benefit for human patients. All right, so what we're talking about here is RNA, which is one of the chemicals found in the cells of our bodies that's actually the very close cousin of the more famous variety called DNA, and many of you know that it's a double-stranded helix of a long molecule. RNA is found as a single strand, but it's most famous in the textbooks and in base knowledge for being the messenger that takes the information from DNA and moves it into the process for making proteins or for coding for proteins. And so the RNAs that were thought to be important were those that were conveying this message. One thing that we've realized over the last 20 years or so is that only about 2% of our genome codes for those RNAs that are messengers. The other 98% codes for RNAs that, that don't code for proteins. We believe that it's really the non-coding portions of our genomes that make us more complex. We have this 98% of our genome we've ignored and it's a chance to go to the moon, see what's there and explore it. We know that protein coding genes can be mutated by things like sunlight or cigarette smoking, but we also know that if you just take a single RNA gene and you make too many copies of those in cells of a mouse model, you can actually cause cancer in that, in that mouse model. Just a single RNA gene can do that. The truth is that non-coding RNAs can drive diseases. But then tackling them becomes the next challenge. I think what we're seeing is a revolution of personalized medicine that is about to hit a tipping point. Well, you could look at it as like a meeting a person. You know, how personal are you if you only know 2% of a person? If you know 98% of a person, it's more personal. One of the amazing things about RNA is that once you know which RNA is misbehaving, that RNA becomes the drug or the RNA becomes the target of a drug. And so in cases where the disease cells might be making too little of that RNA, you can give that RNA back. Or in cases where the cells are making too much of an RNA, you can devise a strategy to kill that misbehaving RNA. And there are cases from our institute where we have been able to see great effects in shrinking of tumors. It's really our hope that we'll be able to use these same strategies in human patients that have cancer. That's the goal, that's the motivation. That's why we do this. We're bringing together some of the greatest minds in RNA science and RNA biology and in medicine, providing a framework for collaboration. One of the reasons why we make a great team is we all have different expertises and viewpoints of this new space. So we have great basic scientists, geneticists, and we're teaming up with biomedical engineers and other experts to help us package these RNA drugs into vehicles that will allow them to be delivered to just the right place. We're starting with cancer. It's one of the diseases that's been at the forefront of this revolution, but it's by no means the only disease that could benefit from these kinds of approaches. We're seeing some of the fruits of this kind of research in cardiovascular disease and metabolic disease and neurological disease. And we think that those diseases will probably um, benefit equally from these kinds of approaches in the future. We have to scale these, we have to improve these, but uh, it's doable, it's within our reach. So it's not science fiction, this is doable.